All right, I'm back, and uh, today we're going to do the lesson 64, which is federal reaction to the Great Depression. All right, last week we talked about the causes and immediate impact of the Great Depression. Today we're going to talk about what was the federal government's reaction to the Depression. Uh, this is Herbert Hoover, who was president as the Depression begins, and this is a photo of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who would become president of the United States in 1932, and he would uh, be the the one who would uh, really institute a bunch of programs to try to help the United States get out of the Great Depression. All right. So uh, immediately, you know, over time, when Hoover was first elected, everyone thought he was going to be a wonderful president. He was very, very popular. Uh, he had a uh, long, distinguished career before becoming president. But as the Depression began to take hold, he got the blame for everything. So we've already looked at the Hoovervilles, right, these homeless encampments that sprouted up all over the country. You had the Bonus Army, which was a group of uh, World War I veterans who marched on Washington and demanded their bonus from World War I earlier because they wanted to, uh, they needed money. Uh, they had lost their jobs. They needed money. They felt like they were entitled to this bonus check that was supposed to be given to them later on, and they wanted it now. Sort of like how the government is uh, giving stimulus checks pre uh, presently with the coronavirus. That was their idea. You know, the government deserve uh, the government should pay them their bonus early because they needed it and they deserved it because they had been veterans in the war. So uh, they marched on Washington. They set up an encampment right outside. They protested in the city of Washington. Eventually, Hoover and the military moved the encampment out. There was a fire. Some of the veterans were killed and Hoover was wildly unpopular. Uh, Hoover flags, people would walk, out, walk around with their uh, pockets pulled out to represent the fact they had no money. And these were called Hoover flags. People sleeping in the street would lay out a uh, newspaper as a blanket and as a covering of, this, of the roadway, I guess, and of, of the sidewalks. And they were known as Hoover blankets. So Hoover, um, he had to do something, right? He's wildly unpopular. He's got to figure something out. The depression is really taking hold. We're slowly sliding sl uh, slower and slower into this uh, depression. So he begins to act. The first thing he tries to do is restore American confidence, this idea of uh, what he calls rugged individualism. You know, we've had depressions before. We're going to get out of this one. We just have to be uh, tough, and we have to wait it out, and we have to do what we can do to uh, make it through. However, as the depression sl slid further and further, uh, he began to take some action, all right? Um, he promoted government programs to aid businesses. Um, he set up a program by which uh, businesses could take out loans and hopefully restart their um, factories, restart their businesses. And he also provided government money for public works. Okay, we're going to build some dams, bridges. This way we're going to put people to work doing those things, and that will restart the economy. It probably was uh, the beginning of some sort of recovery, but we won't know because he would lose in the election of 1932. Uh, it seems there wasn't any depression at all, right? Hoover's uh, speech about, you know, rugged individualism, the idea that he is at Hooverville and these guys are destitute, and it doesn't seem like Hoover's doing enough to get us out of the depression. Franklin Roosevelt and the New Deal. In 1932, FDR easily defeated Herbert Hoover by promising a New Deal for the American people faced with the Great Depression. All right. No one knew what that new deal was, but they were soon to find out. Here is the Electoral College map from the election of 1932. And as you can see, Hoover didn't do too well. All right. Um, it's kind of probably depressing to be that unliked. Um, he only lost by 7 million popular votes, but the electoral vote total was uh, a landslide. And American people were ready for a new deal. And they got Franklin Roosevelt, and the New Dealers. So problems faced by the American people at that point, which we talked about last week. Uh, unemployment, banks were failing, people had lost their savings, and farmers were losing their farms for failure to pay mortgages and because of the dust bowl. So taking a look at this chart that you guys looked at last week, you have this uh, chart of unemployment in 1932, right, right about here you can see that unemployment is close to 25%, okay? And it will pump up a little bit. And then over the first four years of the Roosevelt administration, you're going to have a decline to 15%, all right? So a 10% decline 
And then we'll see after his second uh, inauguration, you're going to see a bump up and then a rapid decline afterwards, which we'll talk about. Uh, the next uh, chart that you also looked at were the number of bank suspensions, right? 1929, the, the period of the stock market crash, 1930, after the crash, and so on. And you see all these banks being suspended, uh, and, uh, suspending operations, all right? And with, with that came the loss of American savings because most of those deposits, if not all, were not insured. So FDR believed that the president needed to step in, the federal government needed to step in. It was not the case anymore for laissez-faire economics. The government had to jump in with both feet and, and get to work trying to bring the economy back to prosperity. FDR immediately began to push through laws designed to solve the problems of the Great Depression. So these laws became known as these alphabet programs because they were known by their acronyms, the CCC, the CWA, the PWA, the WPA. Um, the TVA. So we'll talk a little bit about those over the course of, the, of this week. FDR's program was called the New Deal. It was a major turning point in American history. The federal government has the major responsibility for intervening in the economy to help it run smoothly. No longer would it be up to private businessmen and private banks. Now the government is going to be the one entity that people look to when the economy uh, is not doing well. All right. So that's a turning point. Remember, before uh, the New Deal, that would not have been the case for the most part. All right, the New Deal. It was a new way to deal with these economic issues because the government was going to act. There's no more laissez-faire. There's going to be law after law, agency after agency created during this period to help um, cure the problems caused by the Great Depression or try to solve some of the problems created by the Great Depression. Many new laws were passed. Um, it was a very active federal government. They were divided into three groups. Relief, which were immediate help. Recovery, which were job programs. Reform, and these were changes to make sure that the Great Depression would not occur again. So all these major laws, all these alphabet programs, um, all these agencies that were created were divided into three groups. Relief, recovery, and reform. So taking a look at the unemployment rate again, we see what we talked about just a little while ago, right? 25% in 1932-33, and then a slow decline down to 15% um, in 1937 during the first administration and during the beginning of the first New Deal. And then uh, unemployment rose a little bit, and then you see this rapid decline. And that's due to the New Deal in some respects, but also... Uh, the war, as more and more Americans were put to work in wartime factories for World War II. So I just want to take a look at the, a, ch a chart to compare it to, and that is the federal spending chart, right? So in this federal spending chart, here is federal spending in 1932. That's when FDR came to power, right, when he won the, the presidency. And here is 1932, approximately 25% unemployment. So as this number goes up, as the federal government begins spending money, because they're paying people to work now, right? Federal spending is going up and employment rate is going down. So as the federal government be began spending and they're spending on giving people jobs or sending people relief checks or something along those matters, that, that, that's having an impact on the unemployment rate, okay? And you can see spending really does increase, right? We go from uh, here is a little less than uh, $2.5 billion, and now you're up over 5 right? So spending is rapidly increasing as well. So your assignment for 64 is to complete the New Deal scavenger hunt. The link will be on Schoology. You'll complete the assignment. And that is uh, for this week. All right. Good luck, everybody. I'll talk to you during the week.